welcome all of you who are watching this day on this third Sunday of Advent. We have lit the pink candle. This is the candle of joy. It symbolizes not only the coming of the shepherds to the manger in which Jesus was laid, but the joy they shared with their world. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and with great joy come among us. Let your bountiful grace help us to share the joy that we know in your Son, Jesus the Christ. Amen. And so we pray the calling for this day. Stir up your power, O Lord, and with great might come among us. And because we are sorely hindered by our sin, let your bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. First lesson, the Hebrew scripture, Isaiah 61, 1 through 4, 8 through 11. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up ancient ruins. They shall raise up former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among, all, among the peoples. All who, all who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will rejoice, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what's sown into it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise spring up before all the nations. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. Psalm 126, 1 through 7. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then we were like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the watercourses of the Negev. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, that will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. Second lesson, New Testament, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 24. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, may, and may your 
spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, why then are you baptizing, if you are neither the Messiah, nor, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptized you with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. This is the Gospel. Pray. O 
Lord, calm the waves of our hearts, calm the tempest within, so Jesus may act in our souls, so peace may reside there. We know the world cannot give us peace, but you are able to give each of us your peace, which the world cannot take away. Amen. Here we are, more than halfway through Advent, and the voice in the wilderness is crying yet again. But rather than repentance, this is a voice of comfort, at least for the people of Isaiah's day. The prophet is envisioning joyful anticipation of what time was known then as Jubilee. Jubilee was 50, was 50 days, sometimes a year, of giving back what had been taken away. A reversal, a year of the reversals of fortunes. If someone had been bought as a slave during that year, they were freed. If someone had lost property during that year, that property was given back to them. This was a year of jubilee. A time to return to goodness and to peace. A time of rebuilding that which had been destroyed. These are the exiles returning home, as we have read in these past weeks. But this is also us. We have felt caught unawares by this pandemic trapped by what we could not see nor feel, and at moments surrounded by questions if, if this dark season indeed would ever end. The comfort from Isaiah is yes. This season, the season of exile for the people of Israel would come to a close and rebuilding would begin. extends beyond the imagination into reality is where we and they are finally finding themselves. For Advent is a season of hope, a season of comfort, a season of watching what God will do. Many have died and we acknowledge that, but many still live. And hope is something we all need now and for our future, whatever that may look like. Despair has no home in this prophetic announcement and has no home within our hearts. For Advent is a season of being met by a God who hears, who cares, who comes among us, Emmanuel. The people to whom Isaiah is speaking are broken and they are mourning. Think of all our time and our time who long to hear these words of comfort, including many of us. We are in the midst not of the bleak midwinter, but the bleak December of our hopes. But God has and is continuing to intervene in release of prisoners in ways of justice not experienced before. For God is breaking in among us even now as we watch during these Advent days, even as God broke through those 400 years of silence in the voice of John, a voice in the wilderness, the voice of the witness, the voice of one who points the way to the one who will show the way. He was the one helping others to find light in those dark days of Israel. And the religious and political figures have come to him and have no idea who he is. No, he is not any of those whom they mention. He is the voice, the one who enables others to see the light who will be Jesus. And his voice is also our voice. We are not Jesus. We are not special. And yet we are. For we are called to point to Jesus just like John to the hungry give food, to the naked give clothing, to the sick and the imprisoned give attention, to the poor and downtrodden give justice. As we read before Advent began, when we give in the name of Jesus, we are giving for him. So even as we watch, even as we hope, 
we can still be the voice, the hands of Jesus as he comes to us anew. In the quiet moments of our days as we ponder the beauty of this season, let us be the voice, the hands, the heart, preparing the way for someone who is there waiting and longing and hoping and crying. For hope in this season faces the future without shying away, with knowing that the God of Isaiah and of John is our God too. Listen to Mary's words this morning, the words of a poor young woman, newly pregnant, who voices what John speaks, that the God of our hopes and comforts turns the world upside down yet again. Just watch. See what God is doing in these Advent days. And I read to you the Magnificat. If you want to follow along in your prayer book, it is Canticle 15, as found on page 91. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was at the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We continue now our affirmation of faith as found in your bullet. We believe in God, creator and lover of the earth, origin and destiny of us all. We believe in Jesus, the Christ, God coming to us in the fragile promise of a baby yet unborn, who emerges as the herald of hope, God's laughter in the face of despair. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who implants the seed of truth, brings us to birth as the body of Christ, and empowers us to confront and transform all that is corrupt, degrading, and deceitful. We believe in the coming reign of God. For the coming of that day, on this day, we work and pray. Come, Lord Jesus, come. So we offer our Advent prayers, but before we do, I would like to mention those for whom we pray. We pray daily for our presiding bishop, Michael Curry, our bishop, Marion Edgar Buddy, and Chilton Newsom. We pray for those who have asked for our prayers, remembering especially those who are parishioners, for Aurora Dennison, Linda Abrahams, Mary Smith, Bob, and Nancy Harding. Pray for these who have been offered by parishioners. For Melissa Nicholson, Jennifer Anderson, Emily Christman, Pat, Matt Perry, Seth Bosco, Sean Madigan, Chris Azell, Rand Golitz, Anita Reddy, Adrian Rutherford, Wilsey Jones, Marjorie Pinder, Clarissa Aline, Anthony Miller, Donar Juba Johnson, Bart Popek, Anita Fitz, Florence Williams, Donald Graham, Neon Nevitt, Roseanne Royal, Megan Bunnell, Mark Druckenbrock, Kathy Lewis, Rachel Shaw. 
Linda, can you turn up your microphone at all? Can you turn up the microphone a little bit? Sorry. Okay. Yeah, I think that might be better. Sorry, they said they couldn't hear. Sorry. Thanks to Maya, I know when I'm speaking low and when you all need to hear me more. So here we are. We pray as the church worldwide celebrates the season of waiting. Let us turn our hearts and minds to the larger community of which we are a part, saying, Hear our prayer, O God, and grant us mercy. For all peoples of every nation, race, and disposition, may your love so embrace us all that its power overcomes our conflicts, our defenses, and our fears. Quicken us to our true nature as your children that we may love one another. For all the peoples of every land, may we grow together in our understanding of mission. May we be strengthened in unity and united in acts of service. Renew our vision and experience of Christian community as ever birthing, ever transforming, ever young and open to risk, ever old and full of wisdom. Hear our prayer, risk-taking, wise God. For those who live in fear and confusion, whether they be stateless people in refugee camps, or settled people hidden behind high fences, give to the vulnerable strength and to the secure vulnerability. Give to us all compassion for one another, that injustice may end our, and our societies have a human face. For this community, especially for those who suffer most, for the emotionally and physically ill, for the dying, for those who grieve, for the larger community around us, especially for the newborn children, the homeless, and the imprisoned. We remember especially the newborn child born to Veronica Rutherford and her husband Josie, her area as she begins her new life. May we create a world where shelter, food, and medical care are available for all and where the law protects people for a better chance and better choices. On these days of Advent, we gather up our prayers and offer them to you, O oh God, knowing full well that there are signs in the common events of ordinary life that call us to attend your coming. Amen. And so we pray together our prayer of repentance. May the Lord forgive what we have been, amend us, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of love forgive you your sin and assure you of God's eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As you are watching now or later, may God's peace be with you all. Amen. I might a few announcements. As most of you know, we are in the midst of our stewardship season, and I personally, as well as collectively with other vestry members and people on the stewardship committee, would like to express my gratitude, our gratitude, to everyone who has submitted their pledge for 2021, as we are in the process of developing next year's budget. Your generosity is important to everyone. Please, as you are able, turn in your pledge card and let us know that the support for this parish continues. Using accurate estimates in light of the unexpected expenses experienced through this time of pandemic sends a clear message of our commitment to our giving. I ask that you please respond as you are able. A few things also about the upcoming week or two.
So this being the third Sunday of Advent, we know next week is the fourth Sunday. And after that comes Christmas Eve on the 24th. We will be gathered here in the church with videographer Lauren and myself to offer a Christmas Eve service at 4 p.m. I know we all wish that we could be together, that we could do this even outside in the cold, but unfortunately we cannot because this pandemic continues to surge and different portions of Maryland have been closed down, including parts of Prince George's County, as well as parts of Montgomery County in different ways. So I ask that you please join us. Please let your friends and family know that we are offering this worship service on Christmas Eve, and all are welcome. We hope that you will listen, that you will tune in, and that you will gather with us, even remotely, as we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Thank you for your presence. May God's blessings be with you. Come to the table of God. Blessed are you, God of all life. Through your goodness we have bread and wine and all creation and our own lives to offer. Through this sacred meal may we become your new creation. We are 
blessed creator of all that is, for you are the God who lives within us. From the depths of your mysterious darkness, you call each of us forth by name into the light of this creation that you are preparing as a temple for your glory. We thank you for the darkness which heals and refreshes. Lead us to the quiet and rest that belongs in this season of waiting so our souls may be refreshed. We thank you for the life that is brought forth even from death and the life that has been born from this darkness. Therefore, together with all the living and all whom you have taken into your embrace, we praise your name. Holy, holy, holy is our God. The heavens and the earth reflect your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of God. We thank you for the life of Jesus, whom you called and sent to serve us and give us light to bring freedom and redemption to poor and rich alike, to be forever and for all humankind the image and likeness of your presence and goodness among us. In him we have the promise of Emmanuel. In him we shall all be filled with the holy presence and fulfillment of God with us. The night before he was delivered up to death, Jesus took bread into his hands and raising his heart and eyes to you, gave thanks and said, take this bread and eat it. This is my body. Do this to remember me. At the end of the meal, he took a cup of wine. Again, Jesus gave you thanks and said, This is the new covenant of my blood, which I shed for you and for creation, so that all may be reconciled again. Every time you do this, do it in memory of me. Hear us, most merciful God and send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this bread, upon this wine, that overshadowed by your life-giving power, they may be the body and blood of your beloved, that we may be kindled with the fire of your love and renewed for the service of your most perfect reign. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, our God, forever and ever. Amen. From the holy darkness comes forth the light of the world. Let us share the body and blood of Christ with one another. And so we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ broken for us.
blood of Christ shed for all. Amen. Yeah. 